That was one thing I was going to ask you on that comparison between dolphins and orcas in the realm of intelligence, because growing up, I always heard that, oh, dolphins are way smarter than us. And then uh, in your book, you talk about orca intelligence, too. And yeah. I was kind of equating the two. Oh, okay, dolphins, I've always been told they're super intelligent. Orcas must be super intelligent, too. And I, I like this quote that you had in the book about uh, it was some scientist, I believe, who said they're smart, but they're not that smart. And I was wondering if you can touch on that a little bit. It's it, a lot, it all depends on how you define intelligence. And then that's kind of the problem with saying, are they smarter than us? Are we smarter than them? Um, we have very different ways of defining intelligence than they do. Um, they, uh, for us, intelligence is sort of indicated by your ability to manipulate abstract objects as well as materials in the world. And to construct things and to, you know, devise means for survival and means for feeding and that sort of thing, and, uh, and just devise societies. Um, and for orcas, you know, there are there for them, an intelligence would include the ability to see inside objects to see inside each other, to see where everything is in their surroundings by sending out pings, because that's what a lot of their brains, their brain power is devoted to is their echolocation sense. And um, so for them, intelligence would definitely, I mean, they are the most acoustically sophisticated animals on the planet. And so their intelligence also includes this uh, ability to communicate through acoustics in ways that we can't even dream of, that we can't even really comprehend, right? So, um, in so in in acoustics and in other realms, um, do, uh, orcas are way more intelligent than us. In our realms, in the areas that we sort of anthropomorphically designate the indications of intelligence, we do better. Um, I think there's a very anthropocentric approach to intelligence that we use for these, um, for kind of sorting this stuff out. But what I can tell you is that um, no matter what, uh, the, the orcas have the second largest brain on the planet, second only to sperm whales. And their brain is the most gearified brain, which is to say it has the most cortical folding of any brain on the planet. Um, more so even than their next closest is bottlenose dolphins. Um, humans have a, a gearification index of about 2.2, which is pretty high for a land mammal. Um, orcas, orcas uh, gearification index is 5.7 just a ridiculous amount of folding and they have lobes in their brains that we don't even understand what they're there for. But they, they indicate that they could be lobes uh, capable of sensing uh, uh, emotional states and that sort of thing. We're not, we just don't really know. And, uh, but yeah, the, if you think of a brain as a, as a computer chip capable of processing data, uh, that's what gearification measures. Uh, that's what the cortical folding measures because the more folds there are, the more neurons you have, and the longer those neurons are, the more data that that brain is capable of processing. Uh, so, yeah, orcas have far and away the largest CPU on the planet, and uh, it's not even close. So, um, but a lot of that brain, a lot of that brain power, a lot of that ability to calculate really is directed into their echolocation function. Most of their brain fibers are acoustic fibers. And this is why, uh, so this is why it's kind of, you know, are they smarter than us? And yeah, in some ways. I mean, it's Lori Marino said, uh, I quote her in the book as saying, you know, the, um, Orcas are not necessarily the best humans, but humans are terrible orcas too. 